So we can elaborate on the different uh, tubules. Blood enters into the glomerulus. All of these represent glomeruluses here, 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 all in green. This is the interlobular artery. This is the arcuate artery here, the interlobular artery and the afferent arterioles. The afferent arteriole is supplying the glomerulus here. All of these are afferent arterioles supplying the glomerulus. Remember, there's a million of these nephrons in each kidney. Blood enters into the glomerulus, travels through this vascular tuft, and that's where filtration takes place. So blood plasma is being filtered, enters into the capsular space, and is forced into the proximal convoluted tubule where the majority of reabsorption takes place. Blood that doesn't that blood that exits the glomerulus exits by way of the efferent arteriole. Remember, the afferent is larger in diameter than the efferent arteriole. So just looking at the vascular side, you have the afferent arteriole, the glomerulus, and the efferent arteriole. Notice the efferent arteriole is giving rise to the peritubular capillaries here, and also notice that the efferent arteriole is giving rise to the vasa recta over here and its peritubular capillaries. So that when fluid enters into the proximal convoluted tubule, which is attached to, glomeruli to the glomerulus, so notice this is orange, and it's attached to the glomerulus here, right? And it's traveling through the proximal convoluted tubule, and traveling down through the thick descending limb, becomes the thin descending limb, the loop of Henle, the ascending limb, this is a cortical nephron, so there's very little thin ascending limb, and then we have the distal convoluted tubule, fluid entering into the collecting duct. The collecting duct becomes the papillary duct, and the papillary duct drains into the minor calyx over here, major calyx, and the renal pelvis. Just as a note here, you have a juxtamedullary nephron with a long, um, thin ascending, uh, descending limb. Again, glomerulus, the orange proximal convoluted tubule is attached to it. It travels through the proximal convoluted tubule and reabsorption occurs. Fluid enters into the peritubular capillaries or the vasa recta. It travels down the descending limb to the thin descending limb where we reclaim water exclusively and then that thin ascending limb becomes the thick ascending limb where you recover sodium and chlorine. And then you make your way into the distal convoluted tubule which has variable activity depending upon hormonal effects and then whatever remains behind inside the tubule enters into the collecting duct and these collecting ducts here and here drain into the papillary duct and again into the minor calyx, major calyx and renal pelvis.